Welcome back, ladies, to another amazing episode of Relax Into Love with Teal Elizabeth. I am, I can't even get over just what an incredible experience this this journey of life is. And for any of you who have been listening to me for a while, like, you know that I just, I just really love living on this planet Earth. <laughs> you know, like, they talk about being here as souls on this Earth school and really all that we get to experience on this Earth school. And I really couldn't imagine putting it any other better way because the Earth school, it is, it's the ultimate playground for learning. And to me, I really do see every single day as an opportunity to learn and grow and expand our souls on this planet, both for the evolution of consciousness and for the evolution of just the people in our world, and but also just for ourselves um, and for our own just satisfaction. You know, like a lot of this doesn't have to be for the world. It's also just like so that we can have a better experience on this planet. And I really, really am excited to talk with you today because there has been just such a deepening coming through me um, and so much that is is needing to be birthed out through this channel and through through my voice here. And it's, it's talking about this concept of evolved spiritual partnership. And this is something that I really don't hear people speaking about on the daily. And it needs to be addressed and it needs to be something that starts to become part of our conscious reality and our conscious um, evolution because it is it is the next step. And I really do feel this like conscious collective energy of people are waking up. People are consciously becoming more aware of who they are and the fact that we're not just these human beings that live and die and then turn into worm food, but we are like actually these incredibly powerful spiritual beings here put on this but you know on in this body on this earth to to really up level the world and with that is such a huge part of it is partnership and relationships with others and and that's why I love doing this podcast so much too is like this is really an outlet and opportunity to be able to speak the truth of relationships but on such a deeper level than what we see on the everyday, you know, there's so much in the world that is about text this to get the guy to make him fall for you, or here, use these, you know, quick tips to make him like win his heart. And like, I just, that makes me just roll my eyes because to me, relationships are so much deeper than all of that. And if you're listening to me here, I'm guessing you agree. And so I just want to dive right into it. And I want to talk about how we put ourselves in boxes and how we actually put other people in boxes and how that really limits and diminishes our ability to grow into an involved spiritual partnership. And we can relate this to friends, to family, and to lovers, um, but really it all comes back to the same kind of concept and idea. When we are looking to others in some sort of way to validate our existence or to make us feel good in some sort of way, we are actually unintentionally or unintentionally, usually unintentionally, keeping them in a box. Basically saying from this moment forward, from the moment we've met, like something clicked within us of like, ooh, the way you are in this moment is helping me to feel better about myself, right? And this could be with a friend where this friend is maybe just like really powerful and really got her shit together and she looks to you as like her equal. And so that really then makes you feel validated as an equal and as a powerful woman in this world. Maybe it's a man coming to you, looking at you, you know, thinking, really being drawn to you and you feel like he's this high class man and he's actually looking to you. So then it elevates and makes you feel good. Same, you know, it's all of these kinds of things. There's so many different ways that we look to others to really be able to validate our own existence and make us feel good about ourselves. And what ends up happening in these moments is that when we get into relationship, into partnership with anyone in our sphere of influence, we are, we are without meaning to putting them into a box. And with that box, it's fine. It's fine for the moment, right? Because usually they're coming into your life for some sort of reason to help bring in some sort of deeper awareness within you, some sort of soul growth, some sort of soul lesson. Sometimes they're in your life for a long time. Sometimes they come in and out and teach you the lesson and leave. But what I've noticed and what has been even my own experience is realizing and hearing the feedback too that 
You know, people don't want to be put into boxes and people are always evolving and changing. Human beings and souls are always on a path of constant growth and evolution. And so when we try to hold them to be a certain way for us, then we are cutting off that source for them to be able to continue to expand their soul for their own sake. And this is just like a crazy topic. And you may have even noticed this even with how people look to you as well, right? Especially with family dynamics, with maybe parents looking to put you in a box to make sure that they can feel good about who they are and knowing that their son or daughter is showing up in the ways that make them feel validated as a parent, you know? So it, it goes really both ways. But what happens when we, when we subconsciously do this is that our souls are feeling constricted and they are feeling suffocated in a sense when maybe a few years go by and everything's good and you guys are both really able to show up in that way for each other. But as time goes on, if there is not this deeper understanding that souls will evolve and souls will, souls will continue to grow and expand, we can tend to get very threatened and our ego gets very threatened by this experience of soul expansion. And especially when we get into relationships, you know, I find this to be such a fascinating topic to really unpack and explore because people are always growing and evolving. And so when you think about getting into a relationship with a partner who you say, I want to be married, I want to have kids, I want to live the rest of my life with you, I found you as my soulmate, what happens when they decide that they want to start expanding or, or changing or shifting, right? There's a reason that there is such a high divorce rate in our world right now. It's because of this exact pain point of topics where people are getting into relationships, they are getting caught into these places where, ooh, you fit my box, you fit into the way of the paradigm of the reality that I see in you needing to be for me, for me to feel good about myself. And when we do that, we get swept up into that. We maybe get into it for a few years, maybe even a decade. And then it's like, wait a second, you're not the same person that I thought you were. You're not the person that makes me feel good. You don't do the things that you used to do. So therefore I can't be around you and we don't love each other anymore. Right? But what happens in that moment is that there is that loss of deeper connection and the loss of the understanding of this intuitive knowing that there is a soul partnership that has to be cultivated, a deep soul partnership. And when I talk about soul partnership, I'm talking about truly surrendering and letting go of all of the externalities of that relationship that make us feel good and really starting to sink into the deeper awareness of how do I make sure that I am showing up within this relationship fully, fully from my highest presence and honoring you and allowing you to continue to show up in your highest presence as well. And knowing that sometimes those may be super harmonious and sometimes those may feel a little pulled away. And I really see it as it being like this beautiful like DNA spiral. Like if you think about that where it kind of goes in and then it kind of pulls away and it goes in and pulls away. And this is to me the epitome of spiritual partnership. It's this, this knowing and this understanding that yes, I see you as a soul. Yes, I honor you. I love you. And not I love you for the box that you are in right now and the way that you make me feel in this moment but I love you no matter, even if you shift and change, even if your soul continues to grow and spiral up and up and up, and I may not recognize the same aspects of you, I still know that your soul and my soul are meant to be in a harmonious relationship together. Damn, yeah, it's big, it's powerful. And I'm not saying that every single person you come into a relationship with is gonna be able to meet you at that level. Like this is a very, very deep, beautiful spiritual level. And it takes years and years and years to really even understand and sink into that place with somebody. And usually going through lots of testing times to make sure that that person can still be there in that sphere with you and come through both sides with it. But when you get to that place, it is the most empowering place that you could ever be. And it is the most expansive place for your soul to be. Because not only are you navigating this world completely just doing your own life and being your own soul, but you actually do have a mirror, a mirror soul, a twin flame, if you want to call it that, to be able to harmoniously and sometimes not harmoniously grow alongside of you.
And I speak to this idea of non-harmoniously sometimes because this can happen. This can happen where sometimes two souls need to continue to expand and grow apart to be able to even grow closer together. And so even when you felt like maybe there was someone in your life that was super close and super just in that deep soul level, but then something happened and you guys started to grow apart, like that doesn't mean that you guys are growing apart forever. Like this can be sometimes a test to say, can we both grow as as powerful individual souls and come back together and still be able to do this beautiful dance, right? Like it is truly beautiful dance. And like, as I'm saying this, like I'm imagining my hands literally just like doing this DNA spiral up and up and up. And that's the beauty of it is continuing to see this growth and to be able to like reflect back and mirror this, this essence of just spiraling up and up and up. And as you do this and as your partner does this, it brings this just, oh my God, this radiance of light. It's like this powerful, powerful cosmic energy that allows both of you to just be able to just expand out that light and energy within your souls on such a deeper frequency for the world. And it is so powerful and you can feel it so deeply. So this is this idea of of spiritual partnership and evolved relationships and evolved relating. And I I paint all of this as a picture not to... um, Not to, I don't even know, I paint this as a picture to show you what's possible, to show you what's really possible in relationship. And I think so many times we just get caught up in only seeing what we, what we've seen in the world and what we see other people emulating in their relationships. And we think that it stops right there, or we start getting caught up into beliefs of, well, this is just how it goes. It's been seven years. And so we're naturally just going to drift off. And that's just how it's going to be like, no, it does not have to be that way. Like all of the preconceived beliefs and notions that you've ever been painted around what relationships should be or what they will probably end up being or I've had this experience in the past, so it's never going to get better than that. Like I just call BS to all of it because it's not true. It's only a conditional reality that you've been painted in your life. And what I'm here to do is to just completely like, well, bam, like expand that reality for you and say, "Uh uh-uh, does not have to be that way. You can reject all of these things that you've been fed and actually step into this place of recognizing there is so much more for me. There is so much more for me within relationships. And I want to talk about too, you know, this, this idea of, okay, well, what if some person's growing, but they're growing apart from me and it's not in a good way, right? Like what I was painting a picture of is imagining this being a true spiritual partnership where both people are continuing to up level into being and continuous versions of the highest and highest self that they can be in all aspects, right? And then even if that means pulling apart a little bit and coming back together, they're both doing it within the harmony of taking care of themselves in the highest aspect. But sometimes people don't take care of themselves in the highest aspect. And when that happens in a relationship and a partnership, that is very different. That is not necessarily spiritual partnership. That is an indicator that one person is on an evolved track and the other person is not able to meet them in that way. And when that happens, that can be very detrimental to a relationship and really important to recognize because it can create really toxic patterns. If one person is really continuing to evolve and grow themselves and continuing to like become this higher version of themselves and the other person is either staying stagnant or doesn't have that value within themselves of wanting to continue to grow and expand and evolve or is purposely or unconsciously sabotaging themselves because of their own past wounds that they have not been able to heal yet. This is a really, really big wake up call for you, ladies. Like if, if you are in some sort of relationship like that, like really wake up to that and just see what it is and explore it because that trying to pull someone into an evolved spiritual partnership that is not able to be there and be ready for it is detrimental and it's draining and it's really it can cause a lot of resentment to build up and to me resentment is like one of the silent killers and I'm going to talk about all the silent killers of relationships but resentment is one of the silent killers and when we start to get resentment into our bodies and into our bones around a certain person it's really hard to come back from that and it's really hard to rekindle the love and the fire and the passion and all the the beautiful juiciness of the relationship once that resentment has been lost and so 
This is always about bringing the focus back onto you in every moment, bringing this focus back onto you in every situation and saying, how can I continue to show up to be the best version of me? How can I continue to up level and to grow and fully feed my soul within this partnership without ever looking to my partner to fill me up or to fill that void within my soul, but really continue to do that work and include them in that. Include them by sharing what it is you're going through without ever needing them to help you along the journey. And also being super open to recognizing and sharing with them and letting them share with you what they're going through and being that open vessel and support to help them continue to grow on their own journeys, even if it doesn't look like the journey that you are on. And I'm going to speak to this specifically like within my own experience so you can kind of get a little bit more of a tangible example of like what I'm speaking about. But this has been something that Spencer and I are completely experiencing right now, like truly leveling into even more of an evolved version of an evolved spiritual partnership together. And we've been together over seven years and it's been such a beautiful unfolding of a relationship. And we are at this point now in our lives where we are so focused on the work and our missions for the world. It's like we've, we've done so much of the, the love and the, the falling in love and the building a relationship and learning about each other. And like now we've gotten into this beautiful, comfortable routine and rhythm of just like our relationships on lock. Like it's not going anywhere. Like it's such a safe, comfortable, beautiful place to be. And there is so much more that we know we want to do in the world. And so it's about really in this step, this step forward moment. Oh, so beautiful. This is my universe alarm reminding me that I am an expansive queen. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for telling me this right now. <sighs> it's in these moments that we have been in kind of when you think about the DNA spiraling um, in and out, in and out harmony of an evolved partnership, we have been in this place of just like the complete union harmony. And like, we just got engaged earlier last year. And like, we've just been in this rig riding cloud nine, traveling the world, just experiencing all of the beauties of that everything in the world can offer us. Just like every gorgeous beach and every delicious food and drinking every wine. Like literally it's been so incredibly beautiful. And and now we're moving into this next phase and this next beautiful part of our partnership of like, okay, like we are not separating at all in terms of our connection, but we are also recognizing that our priorities are focused and our focuses are shifting into new things. And we are completely putting all of our attention and focus and priority into building and expanding our empires and our, our missions for the world. And it's in these moments that Spencer is noticing he really needs to be super hyper diligently focused. Like he needs, he's the kind of person like he needs to go to the gym every morning. He's like spending so much, so much time, like logging everything he eats. He's spending like all this time on the computer every day. He's reading the markets. Like he's doing all the things he needs to do to like be so locked in and dialed in on his life. Like a, like a regimen, like literally like an army regimen. And, and he recognizes that's what he needs. And he's like cut out drinking. He's cut out like everything that's bad for him. He's completely just like honing in on like, this is what it takes for me to become my highest best self. And it's so interesting because I even was noticing some triggers coming up for me, even in this moment of like almost judging myself for not being exactly in the same kind of regimen that he's putting himself in to be his high, the highest self. And we had this beautiful conversation this morning where it was like, I see everything that you're doing to really bring in your focus on what you're doing for your business and, and for your life. And that's not how I need to operate. And what I've been really exploring and diving into is so much more of something else that's so much more intuitive and so much more free flowing and really relaxed and gentle and powerful from such a universal source, intuitive place versus from a hustle, go getter mindset that I used to be in all the time. Like I've completely like I'm starting to let go of that in so many ways so that I can really be able to channel on such a higher magnitude of a presence. And to see us in these moments was just like a beautiful, interesting reflection because we're completely approaching, taking our highest self from completely opposite approaches. Um, and so to be able to have this kind of conversation with each other and just recognize, hey, like, I just want you to know, like, if I'm sleeping in in the mornings and I'm not going to the gym with you and I'm like doing my own thing, meditating, and, and you're off like on your computer and like hustling and doing sprints on the beach, like 
let's just make this a very understood thing. Like we're not going to judge each other in these moments, right? Like we do not need to hold each other to the exact same standards and we do not need to put each other into these boxes of the way that we used to maybe have operated for us to be able to continue to evolve and expand. And we both are really trusting our own self and trusting each other that we need to do what we need to do to become the best versions of ourselves. And I literally said, I'm like, all right, I'll meet you at the top. You know, <laughs> it's like, you go your way. I'm going to go my way. I'll meet you at the top. And the most beautiful part is now navigating. How do we really get to intertwine these two worlds and make sure that we are still staying so beautifully connected, you know, because it's easy to stay connected with someone when you're in that la la land of love and lust, or even after, you know, like getting engaged and being in the honeymoon phase. But it's like, when things really start shifting, and I know for a fact too, when you bring kids into the picture too, like that's a whole nother focus, that's a whole nother priority. So it's like, how do you continue to evolve your own relationships with each other and with your own self without becoming complacent, without rejecting the other person, without ever resenting or judging them for not being the way that you need them to be for you, right? And this was a, a really good realization for me as well, because I was like, we used to, every night we would like, well, not every night, but, you know, a few nights a week, we would, like, crack open a bottle of wine, and we'd sit on our balcony wherever we were in some beautiful country, and we'd really, like, reflect on the evening and reflect on our life and, like, talk through what's coming up for us. And I cherish those moments so much, like, being able to really just, like, watch the sunset with a glass of wine and talk with my husband, you know, my husband, lover, best friend. Like, it's just the best feeling. And now Spencer's like, you know what, I need to, I need to cut out alcohol. I need to go really be focusing during the evenings, during sunsets. I don't want to watch sunsets. I don't want to do all this stuff. And to have to really, really like, take that moment in time too and recognize, okay, like our relationship gets to change and it really gets to shift and evolve. And just because we're not doing the things that maybe we did in the past that made me feel really connected does not mean that we are disconnected. It just means that we get to really shift and adjust and evolve how we are both showing up in our relationship. And it's, I tell you, it's been triggering the fuck out of me, <laughs> but I'm also being able to zoom out of it and recognize it for the beauty that it's teaching me and the sacrifice and the surrender that I get to be in this place and say, I hear you. I hear you, God, universe, source. Like, I'm ready to surrender. I'm ready to trust that whatever is coming forth from both of us really stepping into this next highest presence of ourself is going to be so beautiful in its own new evolved way. And that I release letting go of holding on to these these past ways of being and existing as the only ways to feel connected or the only ways to be in relationship and I'm opening to expanding how our relationship continues to evolve and I tell you that just brings in so much light and so much freedom and so much air to breathe to just flush out the relationship to be a dynamic thing and that's it it is such a dynamic thing and it cannot be put into a box or confined by past patterns or past conditions or past way of beings that made you feel safe it just can't so oh that's what I want to leave you with today is this concept of surrendering and this concept of evolved partnership and really truly what it takes to step into that evolved partnership and knowing that this is such an evolved journey of life, right? It's such a place of harmony and disharmony. And in the disharmony, we find new ways of breaking through into bigger, expansive harmonies. It's like a huge symphony orchestra. And sometimes things get off key. And when they get off key, it's just about like, ooh, okay, this is a new opportunity to figure out how do we actually flow together and how do we actually continue to expand this to make even new melodies, right? Even new beautiful harmonies that we didn't even know were created and possible. Woo, my God, my soul's on fire just talking about this stuff. So I'm going to leave you with that for today. Um, if this resonated with you, gosh, please share with a friend, comment, you know, share it on your Instagram story. I would love to hear how this resonates for you. And um, yeah, just sending you so much light and love in this moment as we all continue to navigate the beautiful area of relationships and partnerships. And uh, speak with you next time.